And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Perspectives. I'm Darren Jaime. Coming up tonight on Perspectives, our topic front and center, we talk with Assemblyman Michael Benjamin of the 79th Assembly District right here in the borough of the Bronx. We'll catch up on what's going on in Albany and right here in the borough. We know of major issues up in Albany, particularly the fact of mayoral control of city schools. A vote is scheduled for this week. We'll find out exactly where the assemblyman stands and where does it look like the vote will go. All of that is right now. We're pleased to be joined by Assemblyman Michael Benjamin, and thank you for coming and sharing with us. My pleasure, Darren. Good evening. Good evening. As we know, uh, everybody seems to be concerned about what is going on in Albany. Understanding there is a distinction between Assembly and, <laughs> and you. Senate. And, you know, sometimes you guys get the bad rap, but yet and still everybody's concerned about what's going on in Albany. What's the pace of things like up there now? Well, now that the Senate has gotten their act together and they know what the leadership is, the Democrats are now in control, 30, 32 members to the 30 um, minority Republican members. Uh, they're now moving, I believe this Thursday, they're voting on mayoral control, the school governance bill. They're going to be voting on the assembly bill that we passed back in June, and they're going to add their own amendments. Uh, they want to add um, money for a, a parent training academy. Uh, they want a commission to study um, school safety and school violence and a commission on arts, uh, arts and um, music in, in our schools. Um, I'm glad they're passing the assembly bill. The assembly bill is a real good bill, extending mayoral control, but also tweaking it so that any future mayor, whether it's Mayor Bloomberg or, or Mayor Thompson, anyone who becomes mayor, will not run roughshod over the educational system, that mm -hmm. there will be um, issues when it comes to, uh, what do you call it, procurement, uh, letting out contracts, that it has to be voted on by the, uh, by the board. Um, that you have to have uh, transparency. Because there was complaints that the things that Chancellor Klein and Mayor Bloomberg would do, they would just, by edict and, and, and fiat, they would just make rules and make changes. Um, you can't close a school in the middle of a school year and reopen it as another school or open it as a charter school. You have to plan it out for at least six months, have hearings, and involve the community, and then implement it for the following school year. So those things are, are very important. Parents have complained about that. And the things that are very important, looking at transparency, making sure that kids aren't being tested too much, but that the data is actual and, and factual. And we also gave the authority to the city controller and the state controller to audit the finances of the city board of education. I think that's important. It creates transparency. The public knows how the money is being spent, where it's being spent. I think it resolves some of the issues that were major complaints for those who had opposed mayoral control. And where do you stand on the issue publicly so far, viewers? Well, I'm a major supporter of mayoral control. I think mayoral control has been helpful from 2002 to 2008. We've seen significant improvements in our schools. And, I, and I, we have to give credit to Chancellor Klein and to Mayor Bloomberg for making, holding the teachers accountable, making the principals the lead educator in the school and the authority in the school to get things done. The implementation of charter schools across our city in neighborhoods where schools have been failing. And so you're finding out, like in my assembly district, in what's now School District 9, you have about six or so charter schools that have shown significant improvement for the students there. And the neighboring schools, neighboring public schools, the very same children from the same housing projects at, at Claremont Village, even they're doing slightly much better than they were doing six years ago. And I, I, I believe that's entirely due to mayoral control and letting teachers teach and letting the principals uh, guide what happens in the schools. Optimistic about Thursday's outcome? No, I, I'm, I'm extremely optimistic because the Senate, se Democrats are on board and the Republicans generally are on board with the mayor and getting this done. So it's going to pass. Um, we may have to bring the assembly back in September to look at the other bill that the Senate is moving on, which in involves the Parent Academy, involves the Arts Commission, and uh, I said earlier the other other item on, on school safety. I have a commission on, a commission on that. I'm not a fan of the Parent Academy. I don't think it's an appropriate use of almost two million dollars of education dollars to spend it on training parents to be parents and to be, in a sense, professional parent activists. I'd rather see the dollars go into, into the teacher training, into our students, direct educational services. Um, but others have a different, 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 different mindset. But when the assembly goes back in September, I'll uh, express my views then. Let's talk about back here at home in the borough of the Bronx. Obviously, we've got a lot of challenges that we're dealing with. But I know one thing that you want to deal with front and center is the issue of obesity in the Bronx. Let's share a little bit about that because there's nearly one in five New York City kindergarten children that are actually obese. It, it's hard to believe. I mean, the Bronx leads all of New York State has 62 counties. Of the 62 counties, the Bronx has the highest rate of obesity, both childhood and adult. And that means children are condemning themselves to a life of high blood pressure, hypertension, um, heart disease, um, diabetes, um, ailments that 
we should not be seeing it in young children. And so my wife, Ken, is my chief of staff, has been pushing me to have this forum to be, get to spread the word out, people can understand what, diabetes, what obesity is all about. And we have to get our children young. We also have to get our young adults and, and our adults who are obese to look at their health care and to demand that the doctors work with them to improve their health, to change their lifestyle so they can begin to eat healthier, eat healthier foods, you know, and have annual physical checkups where they can have their blood pressure tested, they can have their heart examined, because too often, particularly African-American people, die far too young than they should, and it's because of issues like obesity. Let's talk about the borough of the Bronx. You talked about the numbers of obe the number of obesity, obesity cases here in the borough of the Bronx. Record number. Any reason why we, we know these numbers to be so high, particularly here in our borough? Yeah, you know, part of it is, is, is part of um, poverty, um, fast food, and, and in general across the United States and across our city, it's the prevalence of fast food restaurants, wanting to have it now, um, not making your own home cooked meals because you know when you eat out in restaurants like a fast food restaurant you have a great amount of uh, processed foods where you have lots of uh, lots lots of salt lots of things that aren't good for your body and people and we have noticed we've been supersizing everything right right you go you get a super big bag of fries the, the huge hamburgers. I mean, those are not well, really good for people. First they ask us, do we want it small? And <laughs> you want it super size before you know, okay, another 40 cents, why not? And then you're adding like 1,500 calories in, in one sitting. And most people only need two to 3,000 calories a day. Mm -hmm. But if you're eating in a super meal, 1,500 calories, and you eat three times a day, four times a day like that, then you're eating snacks, and then particularly children who aren't going out and exercising, aren't running around as we used to do, playing ball or whatever, they're home playing Nintendo, other kinds of games, or because their parents are afraid of crime in the street, they keep them close to home. And so you have a number of things that are happening at once. And then you have some families that don't see a doctor on a regular basis. And you know, we like cute, fat-faced fat children. Mm -hmm. And so our kid is fat looking, oh yeah, that's cute and everything, not realizing that there's something biologically happening that can have an adverse effect on that youngster's life. One of the things that we know here in New York City, in particular, we know that if you go to a restaurant, you're going to pretty much get in a fast food restaurant the opportunity to look and see the number of calories per serving that you'll know, okay, if you're getting this chicken breast, it's, called, it's this much. This biscuit is going to be this much. Uh, do you think that's really doing the public a good service? I don't believe it. In fact, I voted against the legislation only because it's too much information and two, people aren't trained in how to translate the calories into a healthy diet lifestyle. I mean, I don't know how many people actually look at the menu, see, see what the calories are, and then sort of figure out, well, how much calories did I have this morning in order to have it, at the end of the day, balanced out to the proper amount of calories a person should have. And, and, and so we're only we're overloading people with a lot of information, but not necessarily learning how to use it. So part of the form that Kennedy's putting together is to provide people with the ability to understand obesity, understand how to change the lifestyle, and make the information make sense, rather than getting pieces here and there, get all in one place, and you know how best to change your way of living. All right, well, we've got Assemblyman Michael Benjamin of the 79th Assembly District here in the borough of the Bronx. Coming up next after the break, we'll talk to the Assemblyman about the issue of foreclosure and what's being done here in our, in our borough to bring awareness to the issue. Stay with us right here. Coming right back.